be ready to do some shit that you don't want to do, but realize that every single thing that you do contributes to who you are as an artist. <laughs> to be willing to settle for unfavorable conditions for a while, potentially. I mean, not everybody. Some people are lucky. They have some funding behind them. But, um, but most people are going to have to hustle. And New York is a working town. It's a town where you, you don't really lay about. I wish that I had, earlier in my time in New York, thrown out all of my preconceived notions of what it meant to try to move forward in this as an artist, um, thinking, oh, I gotta get a, a gig at PS122, that's where I'm not successful. And if I, if I had got, if I, and I invested time in, in worrying about those things for years, and when I stopped worrying about those things is when I actually got somewhere. You become less concerned at a certain point with what, you know, the people you admire have done or what something with things that you've seen and as an experimental theater maker you're trying to outdo yourself at a certain point. I used to believe for a long time that the Worcester group was the model. I used to always like check in and be like how old was Liz when she made LSD? You know, do I have to have made a you know great, you know, notorious piece of theater by the time I'm that age and do I have to have my own theater and you know, little by little you learn that there just aren't any rules. In terms of like self-promotion, marketing, putting yourself out there, like building a name for yourself. I mean, that whole aspect of things is really like difficult and really gross, but it doesn't have to be gross. There are so many people who are so talented who whose careers never go forward because they can't figure out that stuff and they feel like it's too alienating and outside their personality. And there are so many people who just do make the most horrible work and they get really successful because, you know, whatever, they're like me and they know how to, like, they instinctively know how to, how to hustle. I've actually had some critics who have, you know, who tore me apart. I mean, you know, really tore me apart, apologized to me. And theaters that it would have been unimaginable for my work to be produced at, now producing my work. I think it's the result of being true to yourself as an artist, not being concerned with being popular, and only being concerned with making the best work that I can, making the best work that I could, I could make. There were two points in our history where we were frustrated enough at our ability to think up new things to do that we, that we maybe experienced some doubt that we would go on as a company. We were trying really hard to develop a formula for what a good ERS show would be, and then it would fail the next time. So we had a great idea then, which was to decide instead to try to do a kind of show that we would never make. We tried to identify what it was that was working for us, or what our habits or interests were, or tendencies or tastes. We said, okay, let's go in the opposite direction of that. And that was a very healthy thing to do. I just told him the secret to keeping the space open. Oh, yeah, that was a secret. <laughs> we can't tell you. That's right. <laughs> Sorry, you're not allowed to tell you. I think venues that survive, survive because the people running them have just a really clear understanding of what it takes to do it. I don't necessarily think every venue should survive, um, and nor any every collective group of artists. Um, you know, there is something great about something that lives in time right. and, and then does something amazing and then something else comes. I started working on some more mainstream projects this year. I started working on Broadway, and um, I know, it's sort of, it's for a really educational experience. I do have to adapt my art form for them. I'm at the service of something else. So when I work downtown, I make my own shows. I'm completely in charge, and I'm not on Broadway. I'd like to be. I think I could do it. If you don't have enough love for what you're doing to be really patient <laughs> with the rewards, then you probably shouldn't be doing it. Having a good couple of hours in rehearsal or going and seeing a show we had running and having a good audience reaction to it, that could kind of cure anything. 
for me. And if, if, if that's what your relationship to your work is, then there's really no reason not to do it. Mm-hmm.